Hey guys, welcome to another essential tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a custom VTube character, either modeling your own or using one off the marketplace. And I'm going to show you how I set up the custom facial blend shapes in 3ds Max. And finally, how I rigged it with AccuRig and brought it into Unreal Engine for recording. So the first things first, I brought it into 3ds Max and exported it as an FBX. And that was just so I can bring it into AccuRig which is this really cool free tool by Relusion, which helps you rig your character in an offline uh, mode. So just download the app, and once it's booted up here, you can load in that FBX that you export. Now, you don't have to use 3ds Max, you can use any application, um, but I'm just showing you um, for all you 3ds Max users out there. So let's go to the body rig, and using the reference images in the upper right hand side, you can see roughly where we wanna place these markers. So this is a really great tool because you can use an A pose, T pose, all the different types. Uh, it's pretty flexible that way. So I'm just kind of roughly placing them in uh, the neck, the head, and down near the legs. Now the nice thing about this is it's non-destructive. So once we generate and see how the animation works, we can always jump back to the body rig stage and adjust it uh, accordingly to make sure that it's working properly. So moving on to the hands here, Again, using the images in the upper right hand side, we can use a reference for where we want to place those bones. And I'm just going to kind of scrub through it here. So you just want to make sure you mirror to the right hand side so we don't have to repeat it. Because this character is symmetrical, it should work nicely. So we can now check the animation and boom, look at that. That's really cool. So it, it automatically skinned and did all the skeletal uh, bone structure for you. And they come. it comes with these nice presets so you can actually see how all of it uh, is looking. Now the thing is once you export it, you can always clean up the skinning uh, data in your native application, in my case 3ds Max. But I find the, the ability of this program is pretty good that I didn't have to make any real adjustments that way. Cool, so once this is done, we can go down to the right hand side and there's an export button um, here that I'll show you in one second. Now we can export as an I, uh, avatar to clone, iClone or Omniverse, but in my case I want to export it as an FBX to 3ds Max, and we're going to leave the original textures as is. So let's just give it a name here, and that's all you need to do. So jumping back into 3ds Max, let's go ahead and import that skeleton. I'm going to leave all of the settings the same here. And there you go, that's all the data that we brought in. So you can see here, if I rotate one of the bones, that the mesh moves along accordingly. So I just want to bring in the texture again real quick. I'm just going to switch it to V-Ray here. And I'm just going to generate a simple V-Ray shader. Just that way we can get some, some nice color information going there. So I'm going to choose bitmap and my diffuse character, or my diffuse texture, and then I'm going to reapply um, this to the model just so we can see it in our viewport. Okay, so let's just change it to DX mode. And so with ARKit, there's a reference website you can look at for all the different blend shapes that you can use in LiveLink. If you guys are running LiveLink on your phone and you go to the settings and enable blend shapes, you can see that data that's being generated. But what's really important here is that when we're creating our facial blend shapes, we need to match the name of our model with the name of the blend pose. So in this case, brow inner up, I'm gonna copy that over this model for instance. And using that reference guide on that website, uh, which I'll link below, that's gonna be roughly what we copy. So let's do the inner brow up. And as long as the name matches, when we go to add a morpher modifier in 3ds Max, it'll automatically name our channel based on that. So for instance, if I take our neutral pose here, and I add a morpher. And then I right click and select that model from the scene. The most important part is that the channel is named after that AR kit naming structure. And that just means that we don't have to do any additional work in Unreal Engine. When we import this finally into Unreal Engine, it'll automatically know the correct channel names so that when we do the live link facial motion capture, it'll be directly linking properly. So you're just gonna go down slowly through this list um, and just kind of copy their reference uh, facial expressions and try and duplicate that on your own model. 
So in this case, uh, brow down left, we're gonna have the left eyebrow point down a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take that uh, reference guide, modify my model, and as long as the model name matches that AR kit, AR kit blend shape naming structure, then we're good. Now I'm not gonna show you all the different poses that I modeled um, as it's tedious and, and not really relevant. Um, the main idea is you wanna use that reference guide, create all your blend shapes, and uh, bring them into the morpher. Now you don't have to use and create all of these blend shapes. You can even create two or three and it'll still work. Um, that data will just be ignored. But the more blend shapes you do incorporate into your model, the better the animation is gonna look. So one other thing I wanna show you here in 3ds Max, just one of the issues that I encountered, is if you try and copy a pose, let's just say you're doing the left eyebrow and you wanna copy and mirror that same pose to the right side, um, you can't just flip over the mirror IK because how it works is with vertex IDs, um, that'll actually flip it around. And I'll show you here that if you try and do that, you'll notice that the right eyebrow and left eyebrow is still moving the exact same face. So I found this MCG mirror morph um, plugin, which was pretty handy. And it allows you to create blend shapes in 3ds Max and actually mirror that data to the other side of your model while retaining that vertex information. So it's really handy for being able to quickly knock out symmetrical blend poses and have them properly register within the Morpher modifier. So all you have to do is install that MCG mode uh, or MCG graph, and it'll now be available as a modifier within 3ds Max. So if you scroll down here, you'll see something called view underscore mirror morph. And that's what I use in order to generate my mirrored poses. So let's just use that as a neutral pose. All I had to do was select that neutral pose as a reference. And now you can see when I enable and disable that view mirror morph modifier that we are now indeed correctly getting the morphed pose. So I can show you how that works correctly now. If I select our left brow and then I go and select our right, hold up, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to collapse that uh, modifier down just so we can select it in our mirror more more modifier, sorry. Um, you can see now that when I load in both of those poses that our left eyebrow works and then boom, our right out eyebrow works correctly now. So that's just a problem I encountered and that was a pretty good solution for me. Um, there might be better ones out there, um, but I just wanted to show you guys that. So once we have all of our poses done, you're seeing that uh, you know there's quite a few meshes and poses I had to create. Um, all I had to do was create my one hero asset. Now the name of this asset in the mesh doesn't really matter. It's just one neutral pose with a morpher modifier. And what I did is I slowly loaded in all of the channels into that morpher modifier. So in total here, uh, I think I had roughly 30 poses. And you can just kind of, you know, quickly channel up the values in order to test to make sure that it's working properly. So I just went through and, and added those really quickly. Um, but again, you can do this in Blender or Maya or whatever 3D you know, DCC you guys are using. But once that's done in the Morpher modifier stack, uh, I'm just gonna save it here. We can go ahead and isolate this object. Now, once this is done, we're gonna have to copy back that skin data from the original AccuRig FBX that we brought in. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Alt A or align it to that original mesh. And I'm going to copy the skin modifier from the AccuRig FBX I brought in. And I'm simply just gonna paste it over to that final Morpher modifier mesh. And that's it. So I can hide that original AccuRig mesh and now I have one mesh with a morpher modifier and then on the very top, a skin modifier. So if I show you in a second, this is the results you wanna see. So if I just moved one of the bones so that we see the arm moving and then I jump up the stack and, or sorry, down the stack and I change the blend shape, you should see that when we're exited out of everything that the skeleton moves and the blend shapes are still registering properly. And that will be the structure that you need for the next step. So let's go ahead and reset that. I'm just gonna control Z a few times, get it back to our A pose, and I'm gonna select the 
entire mesh and all of those bones. And I'm going to go File, Export, Export Selected. And then I'm just going to choose an FBX name here. And the only setting in the FBX I'm going to want to change is under the Animation tab. You want to enable animation and you want to make sure that under deformations morphs is selected that ha that's important otherwise this won't work so you need to make sure that that's enabled and everything else you can leave the same so let's hit okay don't worry about the material warning and that's it so I'm in the next part two i'm going to show you unreal engine and how we can get this working